college football week five under the radar against the spread pick them. I do this every single week to hit on the games that we did not discuss on the BetUS College Football Show because there are a ton of people that ask a lot of questions about different games and whatnot. Now, I try and roll through these. I've been taking longer lately, uh, but I'm going to do a better job today. I'm going to roll through and give you just my thoughts on which way these games would lean one way or the other. So let's go ahead and start them off. I'm going to write my times down, and let's fire in. Game number one, Texas. Ah, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. What I'm going to do is tell you, because a lot of people ask this every single week, uh, season record thus far on these picks, specifically on this segment of the show. I'm 26 and 22 against the number. Uh, last week, I went 7 and 5. So do with that what you will. Now, let's dive into it. Texas Tech at Kansas State. Both of these coming off monster wins last week. Let's go ahead and pull it up on the screen here. Uh, Kansas State, at the way that the numbers look, it says Kansas State minus 3.98 points. So Kansas State by 4. Kansas State is hosting the game. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, I think that Texas Tech, again, any game with Donovan Smith is going to be incredibly high variance, right? I believe that Kansas State is the better football team. Just overall, I think they are better at running the ball. Uh, Texas Tech's rushing defense has been pretty good, but I don't know that they have really faced something like what Kansas State is going to bring at them. Uh, As it sits on offense, you know, Texas Tech not great throwing the football, which is a little crazy. Uh, If if Texas Tech is going to try and run the ball, which they haven't done a lot of, only rushing at a 38.91% clip there, I I look at this, I just think that Kansas State can find a way to cover this number. I know it's more than a touchdown. It feels like it should be a lot tighter. The Texas Tech win over Texas, I feel like, was a bigger deal. Because Kansas State has beaten Oklahoma before, and they expect to do it. I don't know that Texas Tech expects to beat Kansas. Uh, excuse me, expects to beat Texas every time out. Uh, so give me Kansas State to cover the eight points there. Moving along, Michigan at Iowa. Tricky spot. Iowa is an eleven-point underdog at home in Kinnick Stadium. The total sits at forty-two on this. So let's go ahead and pull up the stats so we can show you what we're looking at. Now, these are raw stats as it sits right now. And as you can see on the screen, Michigan is a 28.95 point favorite as far as just raw stats thus far on the season. Now, obviously, this number is even adjusted, which is just insane to me. Um... (laughs) You look at the strength of schedule, and there, there's really not a big difference, right? Michigan is number 112 in strength of schedule. Iowa is number 96. That Iowa offense is awful, but they have found at least a little bit with uh, the wide receiver Keegan coming back. I, I still don't believe that I trust them. J.J. McCarthy, with his first road game as a starter, being at Kinnick Stadium even in the 11 o'clock hour, is a little shaky to me. Um, But I saw this last year in the Big Ten title game. And I don't think that the Iowa offense has gotten better. Michigan isn't better than they were last year, but I don't think they're a whole lot worse. So when I look at this, I, I believe... I believe that I would expect Michigan to be able to cover here. I mean, it's 11 points. I know it's on the road. And I understand that... Uh, In this situation, of course, a low total with a double-digit spread, typically, you're going to be able to cover that if you're the dog. But I I think Michigan bounces back after not looking very good last week. Uh, I will take Michigan to cover as the favorite here. I just, I I don't, I don't trust Iowa with anything right now. Anything at all. Next game on the board, Michigan State heads to Maryland and Maryland. I mean, the Fighting Terrapins are currently an eight-and-a-half point favorite with a total of 60. Of course, latest line over at BetUS, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Let's go ahead and pull it up on the screen. Let's show you what we're working with. 
Uh, projected spread as far as opponent adjustments, et cetera, Maryland by 6.35. Now, Maryland did put up a really good showing against Michigan last week on the road. Now they get to come back home. Michigan State is reeling. I mean, they are very, very bad. Uh, you look at this defense here, and I got to tell you, uh, the fact that Maryland is better at running the football than they are passing the football has been very surprising to me. Uh, there's not much of an update as far as uh, Talia Tangavaloa uh, playing this week. They've got other issues as far as injuries go. Everybody is jumping off of the Michigan State bandwagon. But let me ask you a question. Um, what if, What if Washington and Minnesota are just really, really good? Right? I mean, that's a, it seems like a weird question, I know. But that's the way that I'm kind of leaning on this. I think these numbers are skewed just a little bit because of how bad Michigan State looked against Minnesota. But I think Minnesota could be really good. I'm going to ride with Michigan State. I'm going to trust my numbers here. Uh, yeah, Maryland could absolutely win the game. But I'm going to take Michigan State to cover the 8.5. Uh, that number has just ballooned. And I just, I don't, I don't trust Maryland to beat anybody by 8.5. Eight, eight I mean, just at all. Uh, so I will certainly, certainly take Michigan State to cover there. Northwestern at Penn State. That's the next one up. And, you know, Penn State being a 25-point favorite, didn't expect it over another Big Ten team. I mean, unless it was Rutgers or whatever. But I just, I did not expect that right now. And yet, here we are. Um, you look at the raw numbers, Penn State, Minus 22.96. I, okay. Uh, I, I've seen Northwestern do this in the past where they just they don't give a rip, right? And this has happened. I mean, this is a trend at this point. Go listen to the boys over at Westlot Pirates. Uh, it is a trend right now where Northwestern is not good in the out-of-conference slate, and every other year they do really, really well against conference opponents. Now, this is not somebody in the same division, and Penn State is really showcasing a lot of talent right now, especially they went down to Auburn, but they beat a, a bad Auburn team. They did beat a pretty good Purdue team on the road. Like this, Penn State looks like they could be all right. How interested is Penn State going to be in this game? Right? They got a big one coming up next week um, or in two weeks or whatever it is. Uh, actually, that is a good question now that I'm thinking about it. You know what? We're going to delay the show for just a second so that I can see I think Penn State has a bye week next week. And if that is the case, I mean, all bets are off. They, they could end up, I mean, they could, they could steamroll Northwestern here to get ready for the bye week. But let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, Penn State. Da, da, da. This is fantastic radio. I know it is. Uh, there we go. Schedule for them. They have got Northwestern. Ah, uh, yes, a bye week and then at Michigan. I don't think that's going to change how I look at this. You know, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Give me Penn State. Give me Penn State. I'm going to change up my answer here. Penn State to cover the 25. They've got a bye week next week. Northwestern, just the coaching malfeasance that is going on in Evanston. Uh, there are going to be changes made after this year. And if there's not, there needs to be a federal investigation into Evanston, Illinois. I mean, just, just absurd what is happening there. I know they've got injuries on defense. I understand that. But what they are doing with those players, they are not putting them in a good position to be able to win. It is infuriating. And I don't trust them in this spot. So I will take Penn State to cover the 25 there. I've got a lot of favorites right now. Ugh. Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Moving right along here. North Carolina, a nine-point favorite. Total of 53, of course, latest numbers over at BetUS. 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the ACC network. Of course, North Carolina just got bludgeoned last week by Notre Dame, which is not something that I saw coming at all. Uh, I actually picked North Carolina. But here we are. You look at the raw numbers, it says North Carolina by 12.97. But look at that defense. Uh, we did see last week that North Carolina can be slowed down and pretty much anybody can put up points on North Carolina's defense. Notre Dame had been hapless on offense. Uh, while the numbers do say North Carolina by 12.97, I 
kind of trust Brent Pry to be able to find a way to slow down that North Carolina offense enough and for their offense to be able to make some kind of plays. So I I think that nine points is maybe a little too much here. I'm going to take Virginia Tech, even on the road, uh, to be able to stay within that number. I think this thing ends up pretty tight. Uh, I don't know that Virginia Tech has enough offense to be able to win, but I do think that they can cover that nine points. Um, I mean, they are... They're really good on defense. Really good on defense. Uh, you could maybe find a way to score with turnovers, et cetera. Right? Uh, looking at the turnover margin. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, North Carolina, number 104. Uh, 1.7 giveaways per game, and they don't take the ball away at all. At all. So that's uh, that's interesting. Interesting to look at. All right. Um, so, yeah, give me, give me Virginia Tech on that one, plus nine. Da, 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 moving along, Wake Forest at Florida State. Let's see. Right down my time. Excuse me. Wake Forest at Florida State. This one, of course, uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on ABC. I mean, they just stacked that 3.30 window. Just stacked it. I mean, unbelievable. Going to pull it up on the screen here for you. Wake Forest, uh, of course, played incredibly well against Clemson last week. Uh, their defense is a little bit better than what you would normally think of a Wake Forest defense being. Uh, But the offense, uh, not able to run the football at all. That is, as you can see here, that is Florida State's weakness on defense. Uh, As far as passing goes, I mean, Florida State's defense not great. But even what Wake Forest is doing on offense is nothing compared to what Florida State is doing on offense. Uh, Florida State's offense is surprisingly good. The number here is 7. Uh, I've got it at 5.87. Can Wake Forest get up off the mat and find a way to come back? I mean, they're they're playing the game in Tallahassee. Uh, there was questions of whether or not the hurricane was going to impact that. It doesn't look like it at this point. So, eh, I, I think I'm going to ride with my numbers here. I think Wake Forest can keep this within a touchdown. I kind of trust them to keep this a close game. And, and that's what Florida State does against good teams. They play close games. So I, I'll take I'll take Wake Forest in this spot to keep it within the seven. Uh, I don't know that I would like it at six and a half or anything like that. I mean, it, if you made me pick a side, I'd probably still go Wake Forest. I think Florida State just wins a really close game. Just a really close game. Uh, or Florida State. Yeah, Florida State wins a really close game. Good gracious. Losing my mind today. Uh, so yeah, give me the Seminoles. Uh, to win, but Wake Forest to cover. Wake Forest plus the seven here. All right, moving right along, we got a few more games to hit, and we will start off with this one here. Troy at Western Kentucky, and Western Kentucky is a five-point favorite with a total of 54.5 over at BetUS. Now, pulling up the numbers here, uh, do not trust that projected total. I'm figuring out why this one was so weird. It says Troy by 12, and yet Western Kentucky is a five-point favorite. If you take out the FCS game, uh, if you take out like all this other stuff, Troy has actually looked really good this year. Uh, their offense looks good, and their defense looks good. The offense can actually throw the ball around. Uh, Western Kentucky's defense has been surprisingly good against the pass, etc., Um I I don't know what to make of this. Really? I will take Troy here because the numbers are so skewed. But I I don't feel great about this one way or the other. Right? I mean, CUSA, Sunbelt game, et cetera. Like, I don't feel great about it. If you want my official plays, obviously go over to the Bet U.S. College Football Show. That's where I give out the official plays. But on this one, I mean, I'll take Troy. I think that their defense travels. I think that they can play... Uh, with Western Kentucky, I think they've got more talent. Like, a lot more talent than Western Kentucky. Uh, but I think Western Kentucky, like, I might have undersold them for this season. I took an under 8.5 on them. I don't know that I'm going to win that. Uh, they they are surprisingly competent this year after losing so much of what they did last year. Uh, but I'll still take Troy here. I, I like Troy plus the 5, even on the road. So... Next game up. I think we got five more to hit, so let's make sure that we are moving this thing. Georgia at Missouri. 
And Missouri at home is a 29-point underdog latest line over at BetUS. And let's pull it up on the sheet. That's right. The sheet has Georgia by 32 and a half. Yikes. Uh, There's not a number that you can find that Missouri does better than what Georgia does. Uh, Missouri's defense, surprisingly adequate. But they ain't played anybody like Georgia. It's not even close. The, the closest that they had as far as a ground game or an offensive line that's competent was against Kansas State, and they got steamrolled. I, I don't care what they did against Auburn last week because that is a bad, bad football team. I, I don't think that this defense can can keep Missouri in this game. At the same time, I mean, Georgia... I, I mean, what, what do we do with Georgia? Like, I, I just... I, Looking at what they've got coming next week, I just don't think that there's any any reason for them to hold back here. And they looked awful last week. I now they got Auburn next week. I mean, it's a rivalry game. It's not a look ahead spot. Uh, as bad as they looked last week, they might come out and steamroll these guys the same way they did Oregon. That's what I'm going to lean towards. Uh, I think we said on the show, betting on Georgia or Missouri in this spot is like betting on penny stocks. Like, it's, you're just tossing your money in and hoping for something. There's no, there's no value in actually predicting this when a spread is that high. But, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take Georgia minus the 29, I guess, uh, in these. Like, they, again, there's no real reasoning and there's no uh, skill involved in this. When you get to a number that's that high, uh, I mean, you're just you're trying to play psychology at that point. So it doesn't make any sense. Regardless, I'll take Georgia to cover the 29 because why would you ever bet on Missouri? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We got four more to hit. So let's move it along here. Uh, da, 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 da. And we're moving to West Virginia versus Texas. Interesting spot. Texas, a nine-and-a-half point favorite the week before Red River. Uh, total of 63. It's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. And why don't we go on and pull up the sheet here so that you can see what we're looking at. Uh, Texas, again, nine-and-a-half point favorite. I've got them by 12.03. Uh, West Virginia's defense is not great. Uh, they're, they're decently stout against the run. Uh, number 28 in stuff rate. Uh, if you look at that as far as uh, West Virginia's defense goes, the offense, uh, West Virginia's offense, pretty good uh, as far as running the football. But Texas's defense, again, pretty stout against the run. Uh, number 39 in offensive line yards. They're number 23 in PPA per rush. Only number 81 in stuff rate. And West Virginia's offensive line is number 30 in stuff rate allowed. So that's something to uh, keep an eye on here. Um all these player-only meetings and whatnot that Texas has been doing this week, does it mean anything? Does the game mean anything for them uh, heading into next week? That's what I'm curious about. Because I, I am concerned that they may not care about this West Virginia game, but after losing to Texas Tech last week, it, that might have gotten their attention. That's, that's what I'm going with. I'm going to take Texas here. To cover because I think that the way that they played last week gets their attention for this week. Heading into the, you can't go into the Oklahoma game with three losses. You just can't do it. So, so yeah, I think they'll cover. Um, I mean, it's under 10. You've got the hook here. Yeah, I'll take it. I will take it. Give me the Longhorns to cover nine and a half. Next up on the board, we have got. USC hosting Arizona State. The Trojans a 25-point favorite here. Uh, This one's interesting. If for no other reason than the fact that the spread is 25. The total is 60. That's 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. And we're going to pull it up on the screen. Uh, My numbers, just raw numbers, have USC by 33.67 here. And that's where they project a total of 48.37. Uh, I've got Arizona State scoring a little more than a touchdown in this game. It, that always is concerning to me. I will say that. 
when you get a spread this big uh, in a conference game with a team that has already fired their coach, you really have no idea what version of that team is going to show up. Arizona State does still have talent. Uh, if you look at the roster strength uh, that's based on, here we go, number 42. 42 roster strength in the country. Uh, USC is number seven. So, yeah, there's a big difference. But the difference between, you know, number one and number seven is about the same as number seven and number 42. So, I while I do know that USC is more talented, et cetera, Arizona State could find a way to show up in this game. And, of course, USC just survived a game last week. Um on the road, they're coming back home where they feel comfortable against a team that's already fired the coach, etc. cetera. Uh, you got all these different things that, you know, you could maybe find a reason uh, for them to fall asleep a, a little bit. It's a late game. There's any number of reasons why USC would not cover in this game. They've got Washington State next week, and then they play at Utah the week after that. Arizona State is just a week-in, week-out thing. I, I'm i going to ride USC because it would make zero sense to wager on Arizona State. Again, if you want my best picks, go over to uh, the Bet US College Football Show. But if I have to pick a side, you can't bet on Arizona State. It's either USC or a stay away. So, yeah. Again, you're trying to play psychologist. And it's just not a smart bet. But I'll take the Trojans, cover the 25 here. Uh, next on the board, and we got two more, Stanford heads to Oregon. Uh, going to take that off here, try it again. Stanford heads to Oregon, 11 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. Oregon, a 17-point favorite, total of 64 over at BetUS. And let's look. Let's look at what the numbers are giving us. Uh, this is going to be an interesting, interesting spot. Uh Da, 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 swap it up there. I've got Oregon by 16.74. And with the spread actually being 17, that makes it even more crazy. Um, I, I got to tell you, I don't like Stanford right now. EJ Smith being out, like at my numbers are raw. They don't have the fact that EJ Smith is out. Uh, the running back last week at Washington did not impress me all that much. I wonder... How much is still left in the tank for Stanford, even this early in the season? Oregon seems to have found some things. They are clicking. We know that Bo Nix is awesome at home. Yes, we know it's a late game. This thing, I mean, it, my projected score is somewhere around 34 to 17. I think it's going to be worse. I think it'll be almost exactly what it was last week with Washington. Yeah, give me Oregon. Man, I'm going so many favorites this week. So many favorites. Ugh, just disgusting. Uh, but when you look at, at how to break this thing down, yeah, I mean, th there's advantages for Oregon everywhere. I mean, you're looking at, uh, I just, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I will take Oregon to cover the 17. I will do that. Unbelievable. All right, last game on the board here. Uh, da, 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 da. Nickelodeon. Last one up, SMU at UCF. UCF is a three-point favorite. This one, of course, is on Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's on the ESPN family of networks. We don't know which one yet, at least not at the time that I'm recording this. 64.5 uh, is the total, of course, the latest numbers over at BetUS. And let's pull it up. Let's see what we're looking at. I'm going to take SMU to cover. I think SMU is the better football team. I don't trust UCF's offense. I don't trust UCF's defense. I do think that they have got really good players, but I know that SMU is incredibly talented as well. I understand all the stuff that's going on around Florida right now. How can you go against the home team, Gary? Well, let me tell you, Bob, uh, SMU is just better overall. Uh, on defense, on offense, on everything. Again, and that SMU defense is nothing to write home about, but I trust them to be able to throw the football against UCF's defense. I think they're going to be able to put up points. So I think that they're going to win the game outright, and I'm getting three. 
So I'm going to take SMU. SMU plus three at UCF is the way that I'm rolling on this. I may end up actually putting a little bit of pizza money on it. You guys might want to check with me on Twitter before that. But regardless, uh, yeah, I like I like SMU to cover the three. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes. That is the way. Not going to do a recap. You guys can go back and watch each pick as you want to. Uh, or you can go over to winningcureseverything.com slash picks and check them out afterwards. Uh, I believe I should have them up by Friday morning uh, as I just went through them and gave them out right now. It's been a busy week. Busy, busy week here. So, with that said, we're going to go on and get out of here. Go and check out BetUS. They power the show each and every time out. BetUS.com. Um, lots, lots of stuff to find over there. BetUSTV.com as well. The college football show, etc. Along with that, make sure that you enter in the picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. You can click on the contest page right there, or very easy, there's a link in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.